Hello, I'm Simon Kennan from Radcliffe Cardiology. We're here at PCR 2017 and I'm here with Francesco Mezzano and Lars Sondergaard to talk about the portico valve. Francesco, could you describe the portico valve for us? Yeah, so portico valve is a self-expanding uh, valve uh, which is uh, comp composed of uh, pericardial tissue which is bovine at the level of the valve and porcine as a ceiling cuff. It is a, uh, a self-expanding valve which looks similar to others but have some specific uh, features. Uh, basically, the design has been optimized to have an uh, a, a easy repositionability. I would say that in the overall market is the one that has the, probably is the easiest uh, handling uh, in terms of uh, repositionability and, and, and versatility. It has a uh, cell uh, design which is uh, optimized for uh, crossing the coronaries in case of uh, reinterventions and obviously it has this uh, repositionability feature which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty well uh, performed. Another very interesting feature about this device is that uh, it is uh, uh, being an intra-annual design uh, it is delivered without uh, any uh, obstruction of forward flow once we deliver the valve compared to other self-expanding valves. It gives you time for being repositioned and positioned in the ideal location. Okay, just to clarify, self-expanding made of nitinol? It's made of nitinol and uh, it is, uh, again, uh, design-wise maybe looks similar to three or four other devices. Yes. It is very important to understand that all these devices have different uh, me mechanical behavior and different uh, small difference in design and it is key element for success to understand these differences and to apply a slightly different procedural uh, uh, strategy. Okay, that is a key part of this discussion which we'll come back to in a minute. Lars, the CE registry, can you give us the headline figures if you remember them? Yeah, the CE-MIC trial included 200 patients and um, at 30 days they had really uh, good outcomes. Uh, moderate or more pyovalvular leak was 5 to 6 percent and uh, the need for permanent pacemaker at 30 days, 11 percent. So that's really good and also low mortality rate at 30 days, 1 to 2 percent. So, so for sure it's a, it's, a, it's a valve which can compete with, uh, with the best in the class. Okay. What percentage of your TAVI cases are done with the portico? It's uh, 50 to 60 percent of our cases. Okay, so that's quite a lot. So yeah. it's a real work. Yeah, it's our, let's as you said, our working horse. Sir. Okay, so if you were talking to another centre of maybe thinking about taking it on, what would you say were the key patients that it's good to use the portico valve for? Yeah, but that could be several patients. Um, one thing we want to do when we do a type of procedure is to treat as many patients as possible as a transfemoral approach because it's a better outcome for the patient. And uh, using the portico valve uh, either sheetless or in combination with a portico solar patch sheet will give you the lowest introducing yeah. diameter so you can open up for more patients uh, uh, using a transfemoral approach. Okay. It's also a very flexible system. The capsule can easily make a kink. So if you have tortuous anatomy, uh, very acute angulation of the aortic arts, it'll really easily take that kink. And we know with some of the other resheetable system that uh, it can be a risk to go around the aortic arts because the capsule is, is pretty stiff and you can have a, yep. a, a major vascular complication. You don't see that uh, with the portico. Okay. As Francesco said before, it's an interannular inter position of the leaflets which mean that the pressure won't go down during the deployment. So if you have patient with, let's say, impaired LV function where you don't want to do fast rate pacing, you don't want to compromise the hemodynamic during the procedure, this is a very good valve. You don't need pacing, blood pressure will be stable during the, the deployment. Okay. And I also think it's, as I said before, PVL rate, uh, pacemaker rate is, is also very good for this valve, which is also very important in TAVI, particularly now where we are looking into lower risk no patients, people. younger patients. Okay. Francesco, same question for you. What sort of patients do you use it in? Yeah, so I obviously agree 100% with what Lars just said. Uh, the, the main component, I think, is versatility. And uh, really, with this device also, we have about 50% of cases done with Portico in our center. We 
rarely need an alternative access to, to transfemoral. And I think this is one of the key elements yeah. here. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, really performing well in difficult anatomies like uh, horizontal aorta because uh, of this flexibility of the delivery system. It really works well in these patients. You can uh, achieve coaxiality easier than with other valves. On the other hand, you really need to be precise. I mean, this is a very important point. This valve requires precision for implantation and allows precision because different from any other uh, uh, repositionable valve, uh, it gives you time because there is never Im impediment of flow. Uh, so uh, it is very crucial that the operator uh, finds the right landing zone which will result in very low degree of perivalvular leaks as well as in low rates of, uh, of pacemaker implantation. Okay. Is that what you meant when you were saying earlier about the individuality of this the valve and how it's deployed? Yeah, we have been learning this in these few years. You know, you, you look at the valves from outside, they look all similar and you tend to apply the same rules for everything. But I can tell you, uh, you know, we, we have been working almost with all self-expanding valves uh, which have very similar design. I can talk about the bio valve, uh, Evolutar, core valve. Every valve has been uh, demonstrating some specificity in the, in, the, in the mechanical behavior that you need to learn, you need to, to adapt to these valves to achieve the optimal results. And in our practice, actually, we ha I've had personally a learning curve about 20, 30 patients to understand the difference. Now we know this and we can uh, uh, teach it to, to, other, uh, to other physicians. So I don't think that you need such a long le learning curve, but uh, at the beginning we have been a little bit, uh, me personally, I've been a little bit suffering from, from this uh, 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 misleading concept that all self-expanding valves are the same. Okay. I, I fully agree and, um, and that's also we discussed What's the specific features of uh, of Portico? It's it's for sure not the same valve as a, as a core valve platform. It's a different valve. It's performing different. And you need to do your implantations technique to change that from what you are uh, how you're doing the core valve implantation. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank Welcome. you so much.